But welcome everyone. I guess I, I'm gonna stand in here. That way I can see you guys over here and then more or less you guys over there. Um, thank you for coming this afternoon. It is a pleasure to meet all of you in person. We'll be speaking by email in the last couple of weeks, uh, but this is how to cut almost anything. Um, and as you guess, the purpose of the of this little workshop that's gonna be very intense is for you guys to hopefully learn as much SOLIDWORKS that you can say, take a chair like this one, literally create a 3D model out of this. Something random as that, or maybe look at like some of like your back to your back and say, you can literally tap something like that, or maybe I was playing squash, for instance, this morning. So you can grab your racket and say, I can cut this thing. But at least you have an, a mental idea of how you will do that. Oh, yeah, feel free to take, or you can take a table if you want over here. No, don't worry. Um, so I guess let me just go over to the next slide. So just to give you an idea of, of the things that we'll be doing, we'll start first, uh, I'll introduce myself, and then we'll speak about motivation for being here. Although I'll try to be brief because today we have a little bit less time uh, than, than normally would. Normally this would be a two hour long uh, session, but today because of limitations, it's a little bit shorter. And then we'll just get ourselves started with SOLIDWORKS. Uh, and you guys are lucky. Because the morning session, that's where I experiment. Uh, like that's the first one I teach in the day. And uh, today, when I'm very satisfied with it, but I have a couple of things that are clear in my mind about how I want to explain certain things. So you guys get the better deal uh, in here. So that being said, uh, let me go over to the next slide. And I, I should say, all of these, but all of the course material and everything is on the website. So hopefully you guys know, you, you know where the website is. I sent an email, it's on the Git. So I'll be uploading like all of these slides are already up there. Then all of the SOLIDWORKS parts that I have designed for each session should also be there. Uh, and then the videos will also be there too after class. So that, I'll, that I'll take care a little bit later today. Um, so that being said, and, and also the Zoom link, you feel free to follow from your own computer. So that's me. I'm the one on the left. Um, I'm part of the band. Um, also, I my team. That, that's a, an old picture from my previous uni, uh, UPenn. Uh, and that instrument is called the euphonium. You've maybe never heard of that before. Um, and we, we, we are like very weird people. You know, we wear them as hats. And uh, that's the mellophone players that also wear them as hats. Um, and again, just four fun facts about me. Yes, I'm, uh, I, I'm also kind of like a freshman. I arrived to MIT in September of last year. So I'm very new to like this environment, and it's really an honor to be already being able to teach all of you guys. So I'm very pleased, and I'm also very pleased that you guys showed up. Uh, and I'm from Argentina. Uh, that, that's why my spirit animal is the Angus Aberdeen cow. Uh, we like them in multiple ways. One, one way is in my stomach, another one is in person. That, that's a different reason. And then a white cat, because I think designing stuff is just something beautiful. Uh, and just to illustrate a little example, you you guys have probably seen the syllabus. And the syllabus, there's a trumpet that I designed there. Now, feel free to do it. And one, one day, uh, a friend of I, I play the trumpet as well. And I, I, I tend to play the trumpet. And I was like, can you make a 3D model out of a complicated thing like, like a trumpet? So I decided to challenge myself. And it turns out, after a little bit of ingenuity, thought process, right, trying to see how you can cleverly use different SOLIDWORKS commands. I was able to design a trumpet, and that's really my motivation for teaching you guys to be able to say, I look at the stapler there, or like this power plug, or this little model, and say, I want to make a 3D model out of this in the computer. Uh, it's a little bit ambitious, but I think we'll be able to manage, at least have the knowledge for that. That being said, we're going to do a very quick speed run around the room because I want to get to know you guys, and also for you guys to get to know you guys as well. So we start here. So if you can say, one through four, very quickly. Excellent. All right, so we're going to introduce each other and uh, as much, feel free to like exchange numbers, you know, uh, make friends, you know, work together. Uh, this room is open Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. So if you want to come use the computers, you can. Um, otherwise, look at this sign in here. You can connect remotely after those hours to any of these computers. Uh, that way you can use SOLIDWORKS huh? if you don't have it in your computer. Uh, already. So that's something if you want to practice and whatnot. So that being said, let's see why are you here? Uh, and I was really humbled, um, even though this was also a speed run of my end, trying to go through the Google form that you guys all generously built up. So to figure like, why did you want to take this class? And there's all sorts of reasons. 
um, and I'm more than happy to facilitate those visions for you and hopefully make that a reality. The one that I like the most, obviously, is the bold one, right? To really be able to cut stuff. Um, but I think that's really what unites all, like the umbrella and the ritual of this fall. Uh, because, you know, it, you, you can use car for all sorts of things. Oh, I should actually I'm minimize this. Um, so that being said, welcome officially to the class. So you guys are all fully here. Uh, I hope you don't drop, right? I'm kidding. I, you can do whatever you want. If you find it boring, it's boring, but hopefully it will be fun. Um, and these are just some of the logistics that will be going. Um, today's a little bit of a jam-packed day because we're going to go for the fundamentals. Uh, today, when I was having lunch, I'm not sure whether you guys have ever seen Karate Kid uh, in the past, right? Uh, excellent movie, especially the fourth one. Uh, the one that everybody hates, right? But there's a scene where, uh, like Jackie Chan, I'm not sure what's his name on the movie, he tells the kid, throw your jacket, and then pick up your jacket, throw your jacket, and so on. So, you know, I don't know what we're going to do is that sort of process. And believe me, we might do that for like an hour today, just learning the solid world commands. But I'm not kidding that after doing that, like, we are going to design an iPhone 6. Uh, so it's like, yeah, you might not realize that you're actually learning, but towards the end, I think you guys will feel comfortable with the different uh, skills. But it's all a matter of practice. Um, and then, yes, if you're curious about many of the things I will be doing, it's all listed there. Uh, I hope we have enough time uh, to do all of this. If not, I'm happy to continue throughout the year, you know, teaching you guys. My hopefully three weeks should be fine. Um, and just some important information, what you guys are here, but normally this this class, at least this session will be 3.30 to 5.30, a little bit of wiggle room to stay afterwards. Um, and I did update the office hours in there. Hopefully that more or less works for you as well. Also hold uh, two office hours every week, uh, one on Wednesday. So starting tomorrow, actually an hour before this class, uh, one on Sunday, so 2.30 and 2 p.m. So the one on Wednesdays is actually here. The one on Sundays is upstairs. So upstairs is open 24 seven, but that this place is only Monday to Friday. So I'm happy to help you on any individual projects that you might have or questions about the class. Uh, whatever you guys might be interested in learning about. Or you can always shoot me an email. Um, and most questions should be answered on the syllabus, uh, but I, I, I don't mind answering anything afterwards. Uh, so that being said, this is my tentative plan for session one. Uh, it might be a little bit too difficult. So I think I'm gonna mix fix things around. We'll see how everybody's doing. Uh, we'll jump now straight into SOLIDWORKS. So if you have your computers now, open SOLIDWORKS. And I'm going to open it now for mine in a moment. And we're going to start illustrating some of the basic commands, and then we'll do a cake together, uh, which I think is one of the most uh, interesting things that one can do. And if you see, for instance, in my next slide, right, I made a cake myself. This one is a little bit of a overly complicated cake. In fact, I don't think it's a cake. It looks more like a tower. Uh, but, you know, it has like different colors, you know, different Let's say the bottom one is chocolate, the one in the top is strawberries, uh, bananas. Uh, the purple one, I'm not sure what that flavor would be. Uh, maybe grapes. But the thing is that we're going to start cutting from a very low level and we'll get to a very high level. So let me just go to SOLIDWORKS. So I'm going to go here to my remote computer. And once you open SOLIDWORKS, yeah, that, that little window shows up. So let's wait for a second. Uh, and as you can see, some of the things that I was working on this morning and before class, some exciting stuff for the, our course. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll click on part. So just go ahead and click on part. And this is the environment that shows up in SOLIDWORKS. So I'll wait until everybody's here. And one thing is super important, please stop me if I'm going too fast. Uh, I just want to make use of time, you know, practice along with you guys. I'll also be going around. Do something. So I, I think what I'll start doing now is I'll start demoing some of the different features of SOLIDWORKS and walk you through the workspace. And then I'll go individually with you guys answering any questions. And then we'll start doing the okay. case. Uh, that being said, this is what shows up when you are here in SOLIDWORKS. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'll go here to a sketch. So go ahead and click on sketch. And then once you click on sketch, then you can go to this button over there. That's also called sketch. So if you do that, you see that these three planes show up. Uh, what do these mean? Is that in your workspace, you have to choose one of these planes to see where you're starting to build your sketch from. 
So in our case, we can choose the top plane. So now more or less over here. here. Uh, one thing you'll, you'll see that appears are this set of axes, these two red axes in there. And that point in there, that point is the origin. And it's super important that you bear this in mind because anything, anything that we do in SOLIDWORKS has to be referenced with respect to the origin. And what do I mean by that? So let's do, for instance, I'm gonna draw a circle, right? So if I go up here to the sketch tools, I do a circle and yeah, I just well, I click escape. So I have a circle like that. Um, actually, if you wanna escape a command, just it's as easy as clicking escape on your keyboard. Do you see the circle is blue? What does it mean? It's like under here, there's a little, oh, let me just move this around here. There's a little note that says under defined. What I mean, well, it's just literally it means it's under defined. And so that, that just means that, yes, I can move the circle around and I can make it bigger. So how do you define, say, a circle? Uh, so one way to do it is first, I'm gonna, you see where it says this line command? I'm gonna click on the little triangle and I'm gonna click on center line. So center line, what allows me to do is to, it's like, it's like, like an imaginary line that allows you to see where things are in space. So I click in center line, so I go from the center of the circle and then all the way down until the dashed line appears. Then I click and then I go all the way to the origin. Then I click escape. But you see stuff is still blue. So then I go to the command that is here that's called smart dimension. So I click in there and I click on that line and say, I wanna make that four. And then I wanna make that 2.4. And then I wanna make that circle be two. So in other words, you're working in the plane and, and the origin is the point zero zero. And then everything else, you have to tell me where it is located. It's not automatically gonna recognize where it is. And the way to do it is using those center lines in there. So these are like dashed lines and the circle being a solid line. What it means is that then I can do more interesting things like bring it upwards, give it some volume. Um, one thing I'll say as well is that down here where my mouse is that it says IPS, IPS is the units that we have right now. So if I click in there, it's in inches, but I can also change it to millimeters, to centimeters, uh, anything that you might find interesting. Or SolidWorks is smart enough that if I click on the, double click on the four one, right? That's how you would edit that dimension. I can also make it like five. And, and you see how everything moves, right? Which is, I can say, let's say six, or I can say five centimeters. I can explicitly tell it and it updates like that. So it's showing 1.95, 97 inches, but five centimeters. I'll bring it back again to four. So now let's continue doing some other stuff. Let's say I want to now draw another primitive shape, like a polygon, like a hexagon. So in here, I can define the number of sides. Say I want to have 10 sides. Uh, I'll click OK. And then I'll choose one point in the canvas. And you see how the hexagon gets created. So now we have, so how do you define a shape like a hexagon? So the way to do it is very similarly, right? I go back to center line, so a little triangle up there. Then I click on the origin, and then all the way up to here, and you see. Well, actually, I'm gonna do it in another way. I'm first gonna I go back to center line. I go from the origin of the hexagon or this shape, and then down until dash line, and then boom. And then I'll provide the dimensions. So let's make it four. Let's make that also four, and then I can define something like the side of the shape. So I can tell it, all right, uh, actually, I don't want that one. Let me do control Z. There we go. I want to define like this. So let's make that a two, two inch side. But you see it's still blue, this hexagon, right? And the reason why it's still blue is because I can, I can rotate it around. In, in other words, one way to define it is if I go here to smart dimension again, in the tool that we've been using to provide numbers, and I click on the dash line and say, I click also on the side and I define an angle. So say I wanna make it 20 degrees. So you see how it rotates completely. Otherwise I can say, I can double click here, so let's make it 10 degrees instead. And it also does that. Uh, and to exit that command, you click escape. So any questions so far about this, pro this simple procedure of creating shapes?
Uh, I'm gonna assume the child is dying, otherwise don't be shy. Um, and another thing is, I can also create a regular line, right? I can say, I'm just clicking here, and I'll start building, say, like a shape. Oh, I don't want it like that. I'll create the line. So again, once you see that that part is blue, and the reason why it's blue is because while that dimension of the rectangle, it's defined, this other dimension, the one that goes downwards, isn't. So I can move the shape up and down. So then to make it fully defined, I'll click here on Smart Dimension. And on that side, I'll define that length. And you see, now it's fully defined. Now, one little trick that you can do is if, if I right click on, on, say, one line, you see like these arrows that appear in there. So again, I'll, I'll right click and see those arrows. What that means is that I can convert that line to a construction line. So you can go, you can switch between solid lines and construction line. So now explain a moment what's the difference between them. And I'll, let me, I'm just going to convert all of them to construction lines now. Let me illustrate one other tool, which is the slot. So I'm going to take this slot in here. And the way the slot works is that it shows you different types up there, depending on, you know, whatever uh, considerations you have. So I can choose, for instance, this point, and I can choose that point. And you see it creates a slot and it's blue because I haven't told it how wide it is. So let's make it like 1.25. I don't know. And now what does it mean to have everything a solid line? Is that the next thing I can do is I can go here to where it says features. So I'm still on the on the sketch here to features. And then I can give this volume. And how do you give this volume? You click where it says extrude boss base. So I click over there. And I start selecting areas. So I select that area. I select that area. So, oh, I want that area. I want this area. I want that area. And you can say 0.3. And then you click OK. So now you have like a like a prism, like some sort of shape. But if you had all center lines, this wouldn't work because center lines just don't take uh, a perimeter. They are just like imaginary lines for reference uh, only. Um, and if you're not happy with this boss extrude, you can right click in there and in the little edit feature, click in there and you can, I don't know, change that dimension to 0.5. And let's make that as well. So it changes that. Otherwise, I can either delete it, in which case I say yes, in which case I'm back to the sketch. Um, I can. Actually, I don't want to do that. I'm clicking Control Z, or you can click on the little triangle, right? Because now you're telling me, hey, Andy, actually the circle on, on that shape has to be a little bit bigger than what it currently is. So how would you change that right now? So that's why you some I mentioned. So what you do is you go to the little triangle here, and there where it says Sketch One, I right click in there and I go to Edit. So now I'm back in the editing mode, and that number I can change it to like four. And let's exit the sketch, and you see how the shape also dynamically changed. Uh, and one thing that is not obvious is if you look in your guys' mouse, if you click on the ball, that's how you rotate your view. So you do, and I'm gonna, yeah, and also definitely save. Uh, another thing is if you're working on these computers, like the ones that are around around here, um, don't save it. In, save your files, but send them to you by email afterwards. So they might not be stored in these computers afterwards. Uh, just another point. So how are we feeling so far? Good, more or less understanding. So in, the, in that case, I'm gonna start showing you guys how to build a simple cake. A simple cake. So I'll, I'll do a quick demo of that using illustrating some of these ideas, and then I'll start going around uh, helping you out how to make uh, the cake. How does that sound? Good. Right, so let's so let's do it. Yes. Go ahead. Oh, the sketch. So, how? So, he's asking here how do you go back to the sketch? She so would, where it says sketch in there, you would right click the sketch. So, right click, and you see that little button that says sketch. Okay, here, back there. So, I'm going to start doing that. So, I'm going to go where it says file, new, and I'll start making a new, a new part. 
Okay. So as I said before, let me let's go over the steps again. I click on sketch, then I go to sketch again, and then I go to say the top plane, for instance. And because this is a cake, the easiest uh, shape to start with would be a circle. So I can click on the circle and then place it at the, well, I can actually place it here, for instance, right? I don't care. Let's make it a circle that is six inches big. But now, as I said before, this circle, this is the Karate Kid mentality. Again, I need to explain this like five times that way you guys will remember. The circle is blue, which means it's underdefined. So to fully define it, then we need to go to the center line and just, so again, center line is clicking on that little triangle. You click there, oh, you click here on center line. And then from that point, I go downwards until that dashed line appears and then all the way straight to the origin. So then the next thing I'll do is I click on smart dimension and then I go here, let's say I give that four and then I give that one two and voila. We have a circle that is all fully dark. It means it's fully defined. So then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'll go here to features, then boss extrude, and uh, let's make it one inch, because why not? And then say, okay. And as I said previously, if you click on the ball of your mouse, you can rotate your view. Now, this is gonna be a cake with multiple layers. So I'm gonna start building the next layer. Now, the, the, the easiest way to do that is by clicking here on sketch again, so I can go to sketch, then again on sketch, it's gonna ask us to select a plane. So I can either select again the three elementary planes that we started with, or just the top face of, of the cylinder. So now our starting plane is uh, is this one. Now the little challenge is that the origin is there, and I really wanted to use, I wanted the the center of the circle to be my origin. So one way to get the center of the circle is by clicking on this little triangle in here, going to the center line, and then making, there you go. So I'm gonna click that point. I'm gonna click that point. And you see, I have a fully dark line whose middle point is the center of the circle. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, select another circle. I'll do it from that point in there. And I'm gonna click on smart dimension. Uh, let's make this one five. And again, I go back to feature. Say, actually, I can exit the sketch, in which case you're left with this. Or if you want to continue editing the sketch, as the question was previously asked, I right click in where it says sketch two, right click, and I go to edit sketch. There you go. And then with the with the ball, I can move again. Then go back to features. Oh, and I give boss extrude, and I give it another inch. So now I have another layer. Now let's make the next layer for so the first layer, let's make it a, a polygon, a 10 sided polygon. So, how would you do that? Then I go here to sketch, and then I click on sketch, and I click here, and I'm going to do the exact same thing. I go back to a little triangle, center line, then I click on this point, then I click on this other point, and then I'm going to go here to where it says the polygon, and yes, it's 10 sided. I'll choose the origin. And you see, I have it like that. I click on Smart Dimension. I'll define the side to be maybe 1.2 inches. And then you see it's, the polygon is still blue. And what it means for it to still be blue is that I have to define like the angle, say, between this and that. So still on Smart Dimension, I can click on the dashed line and on that side and say, I want that to be 90 degrees. So now I have my polygon nicely aligned in there. So then I can go to features, extrude, and one inch. So I've done that. How about you guys start trying something like this? I'll start going around. Let's let's see if it, over the next 10 minutes we can reach this point of the demo. And so now one thing I wanted to illustrate about this is that say I want to do a sketch that is like in here. So now, if I want to, again, another question is, how do you find like the center of this figure? And one way to find the center is to say, I'll click on the center line, and then I'll go to like that point in there, that point in there, and then the middle of that center line is 
the center of that polygon in there. And so one thing that I might, I'm gonna try to do is, because this is a cake, right? And someone's, it should be someone's birthday. I'm gonna create a random line like that. Then a little circle that goes like this. And then to define that line, I'm gonna define this angle in here. So let's say 30 degrees. Then I want that position to be, oh, maybe one. And maybe that I'm gonna make it 0 0.3. And then one thing I can do is I go here to features, extrude. So now we have like a like one of the candles, right? Now, one thing that is interesting is if you go to where it says linear pattern, if you click on the triangle, I can do a circular pattern. So in the features and faces that I want to make a pattern of, I can click on the candle and then on the direction, I'll choose, say, like this face and she starts to show up. So this kid is turning six years old. Uh, that's why six candles. So now we have something like that. Uh, or you can get a little bit more creative and say, this is not actually a candle, this is like, like a coliseum. Right, so what would that mean? That now I can say I'll do a sketch, and I'll make a sketch on the top face of the uh, what used to be a candle, and now I'm gonna make a center line that goes all the way from that center to this center in here. I'll click Escape, so now I'll do a circle that goes all the way from here to there like that. I'll define that to be two point seven, and then I'll give it some height, let's say 0.2, and voila. So now we have, it's no longer a bird, it's just, now it's becoming a tower. Um, and, and another interesting thing, while we're here, and I'm gonna let you guys try these series of commands in a moment is, if you go to where it says fillet, up there, right? I can click in there, and what does this do? Say I click fillet and then that's edge, I can tell it, all right, let's make it two. So it's rounding, that edge in there. Uh, another one that I can try instead is uh, the chamfer. So I click on the little triangle out here to chamfer. So then I can click on each one of these lines right here. So I'll go slowly doing that. Oi. And then you can say, all right, I want this to be 0.2. And I'll say, okay. And now you have something like that. So why don't you guys give this like this little house thing up a, a, a shot? And then we're gonna, once you guys manage to do something like this, we're gonna start doing perhaps the iPhone 6. So let me do a couple more things on the cake. Two more things really, like that, nothing too fancy. So I think the very first thing I wanna do is say, I wanna do a sketch in here. Because I, I was told for some reason that it has to have some holes because I know there, there has to be some place holding like separate. So one way I can do it is, so I already selected like that face. So I'm gonna go here to the center line again, and I'll choose again, that point in there, that point in there, I click escape. So now I have a line, a line that is on this face in there and whose origin, so the center, the, origin, the middle point of that line is gonna be the origin of the circle. So now what I'll do is center line, and I'm gonna try, there we go, fine. I'm gonna draw a random line like that. I'm gonna do this time an ellipse, cause that sounds interesting. And I don't normally use ellipses. There we go, Some, something along those lines. Um, so as usual, how do we define this? I click on the line. Um, let's make that, yeah, 2.75, that sounds fine. Then on the line and on that one, so I can define the angle. So let's make that 60. And then for the ellipse, what I can do is on those two points, let's make that 0.2. And then on these two points, Let's make that point three. And then what I want to do is go here to features. So one, one point that was brought up before, which is very interesting is that if I want to do a circular pattern of something like this, you can also do it as a sketch. What does that mean? That if you go to where it says linear sketch pattern in there, you can also do a circular pattern, but 
I don't like to do that. In fact, don't never do that. Because if you do it, you are not, if you do a circular pattern as kids, you're not able to edit it. When you do a circular pattern as a feature, you can change it as many times as you want. Uh, so it's like, just something to have in mind. So I'm just straight gonna go to features. And this time I'm gonna extrude cut. So I'm gonna say, and one thing I'm gonna point out is that, you see how it says blind? Like in there, I can say, all right, I want to make it like 0.6, the hole. But if I click in, in there, there's different options of, of like how I make the hole, right? For instance, I can say through all, in which case it's just going to go through the entirety of that feature. Alternatively, I can say up to surface and I can click up to which surface, right? Up to that one. So it's going to do it like that. So now we have a hole and that was, I did it using extrude cut. So again, I'll go to where it says circular pattern. So I click in there and it already I'm selecting my cut extrude and for the direction again, the circle, uh, let's say one this time 12. So now I have, you know, a pretty decent cake, but this is an ugly cake because it's gray, right? So let's give it color like the one that we saw on the PowerPoint slides. And so one way to do that is like this. So I'm gonna right click on one of the faces and you see this panel appears. And this one in there, it's called appearances. So I can go to the little triangle and where it says boss extrude, I can click in boss extrude and then say, all right, I can change it to dark color. Like that. And I can keep on coloring, say the fillet as well. And I click, okay. Another thing that is pretty cool that I'm gonna do is I can also right click in that face. I can go to boss extrude. And then you see this appears, this panel on the right. So I can click on the little triangle and select, say, a material. So we can go to the metal and say, I want to make that out of bronze. So you can also make that piece out of bronze. What about making those columns out of like silver? So again, I right click on the column. I go to that little triangle, circular pattern. And then let's look for silver. Let's make it this polished silver and dark column as well. Uh, and what not? So you can start uh, coloring your cake. So why don't you guys give this a shot? Like adding some material properties and making, uh, putting some holes into this. So once you're, I'll, I'll give you 10 minutes, but then what I'll do is I'm going to do a demo of how to design the pencil. One, one thing that I thought was, I guess I can illustrate right now is, like I'm gonna teach you guys how to constrain uh, certain things. So one, let me let me do a quick example of some. Let's say I wanna do a hexagon on top of this face. So I'll go here to sketch, sketch. I'll cho choose that top face, right? And one thing I'm gonna do is I'll do a quick center line that goes like this, right? And then I'm gonna do a hexagon. Well, it's a, another polygon, right? And the usual stuff, right? I define one of the sides, right? Let's give it, let's say it's 0 0.3. And then I define the side and that line. I make it like 90. But you see, everything is still blue. And the reason why everything is still blue is because that line doesn't have a dimension, the one in here. So how do you do that? So one way to do this is I'm going to create another line that goes from here to here. So now I have two lines. Now, if you click on this line and you hold control and you click on the other line, you see this panel over here appears, right? So you click on one line, then you hit control and then you click on another line. And then what happens is that I can say, all right, let's make them collinear. So now these two lines are parallel, but still the hexagon is, it's not fully defined. So I can, again, click on one line, control, click on the other line and then click equal. So now, it is gonna be in the origin. So that, that's just a way that you can play around. Then I can also, another thing I can do is say, say I have a rectangle that is around there, right? So let me, again, define the position of, of the center of the rectangle, right? Like that, that's very good. And one thing I can do is I can click on that line, say one of the sides of the rectangle, then click on control, then click on one side of the hexagon and say, I want to make them parallel. Actually, it's not going to, oh, let me do control Z. 
But the reason for that is because I should probably delete some of those green check marks. So all of these little green symbols that go appearing, those are constraints. So I'm just gonna remove all of those from there. So now I think it should work. So I can click on this, and then go there and make it parallel. So now it changes. It's just that now it lost all of the constraints. So one thing I can do is click on the line, control, click on that line and make it perpendicular. And now I can do the same thing. Click on this line, control, click on that line, make it also perpendicular. There we go. So now all that remains to be done is, oh, let's define uh, that side to be like 0.4 and this side to be 0.3. And then, oh, and I should also define the length. Oh, Ctrl Z. There we go. Uh, and now this is a situation where I'm actually not sure why. I think, there we go. I just need to be fully defined. So now it's fully constrained. Oh, I bounced again. There we go. it came back. Excellent. So give that a shot, but really now uh, what I want to do all of us together, because it's already 528. So we're not here for that much longer. It went by very quickly. Um, I just want to show you how to design the pencil really quickly. So that way it's going to be recorded and you guys can try it on your own afterwards. Um, if you go to the website, so let me show you where the website is for a second. Uh, in here. Hopefully have you guys been getting my emails uh, lately? If you haven't got an email from me, let me know. Bro. That that is important. But in one, I think my second email from yesterday, I here I created the website. So now everything is gonna be posted in here, right? So so today we were here in session one, and you can see the different projects. So you have the iPhone six, the pencil, the cake, all of those files which I cut it in here. You can find them where it says session one folder. So you click in there. And they are all around here. And now for the pencil, pencil space case in particular, I can right click in the PNG one. Oh, actually, not in that one. Let me go back to session one on the PDF. And I made an engineering drawing of the pencil. So I made this, this one in here. So what I, what I encourage you to do is to download this PDF in there and try to more or less follow the dimensions that I have in there to make the pencil. I, I kind of already know it by heart. So I'll try to make it now uh, in front of you guys and then I'll answer any other questions, but it's all here. And then um, one last thing I'll say is that, right, like I'll be posting the video like there. Uh, I'll probably post like the YouTube link. So that way you have everything there. Uh, otherwise just send me an email and I'll show you. Um, so let's go back to SolidWorks one second. Uh, and just one thing I want to say, one, one last thing I want to illustrate is, See like this side in there, right? I can also say sketch and I can make a sketch on that face too, right? Which is this one right there. So now what I can do is say, I'll do a center line like that. It goes inside and then I can make like a circle. Say point 30, uh, let's make it 35. Let's extrude. Yeah, let's leave it like that. I, I don't care. And then I can make also another circular pattern of this thing. Uh, how many faces did I have? 10. So now, in other words, I'm not constrained to be building like a cake always towards the top. You can build also sideways. And the reason why I'm saying that is because, believe it or not, uh, and COVID, there's not going to be enough time today, but using very similar techniques to the ones that we have to that we have shown you can build literally the iphone 6 like making a model of the iphone 6 is actually not very difficult at all uh, and in fact if you're curious i can show you how more or less it's done i have a little bit of footage from the morning session that maybe i might include i might combine both videos that way you can have i made a more simplified version of the iphone 6 but it's very similar because i can make like say buttons on the side and then like the upper logo, I'm going to show you how to do that tomorrow. And then, you know, I'm coloring all of the different parts. So this is all done, again, using the same skills with which you are making your case. So now let's go to the pencil, which is a much easier one. So I'll go, uh, which is file, 
new and part. So let's make a very, very simple, simple pencil. So the way I'm going to do it is I'll go here to sketch, sketch, I'll go here to top plane. And I don't know how, how why do you think a pencil is like in inches? Just guesstimate. Point two inches. Like, like why does it like the diameter? Maybe let's say point three inches, right? Um, so I'm gonna go like that. I'll make a circle right from there. Uh, 0.3 inches. And now, what I'll do is I'll extrude, and I'll extrude say 0.5. So I'm gonna start with the part of the pencil that is, you know, the like the little metal part that holds the the rubber. So I'll start with that. Now, what we're gonna do is the hexagon, the hexagonal part of the pencil. So how do you do that? You go here to say sketch sketch and i'll click in here and i can go to again to the hexagon shape i'm gonna let's make it interesting let's make it a 10-sided hexagon because why not right this is our pencil and i click here and i can make the hexagon like that now using the the, the constraints that i was showing you previously there's something very cool that you can make you can select this point Right, click on the point, then click on control in your computer, and then click on the circumference. And you can make this coincident. So you see how now you have the hexagon inside inscribed within the circle. That's pretty good, but again, why is the hexagon still blue? Because it's underdefined. So to fully define the hexagon, this is what we're gonna do. We'll click on center line, we'll make a, a straight line that goes upwards like this. And I'm gonna also define that line. It's always good to have like um like a straight edge in this case, like a straight line. And all we need to do is define the angle between this line and that line, and say let's make it 90. Okay. So now that we have our hexagon within our circle, I click on features, and let's make that five inches tall. Right. So now we go. It's kind of taking shape. Now let's make the rubber. Let's go with the easy stuff first. So to make the rubber, what we can do is now rotate and select that face. So I'm going here to sketch, sketch. I'll select this little face in here and I'll make a circle. In this case, let's make it slightly smaller. So perhaps 0.28 inches, less you. And then features, I'm going to make the rubber extend just 0.2. So now we got the rubber, but just to make it a little bit more realistic, right? One thing that I want to do is I can uh, go here to fillet, click on fillet, and maybe make that a little bit round. That way it's like as if it was worn out. And then one last thing I'm gonna do, just to make it more realistic, is I'm not gonna sh I'm not gonna teach you yet how to make a cone. Uh, the cones are probably gonna come for potentially tomorrow or Friday. So then we're gonna make an unsharpened pencil just for the purposes of simplicity. But the little trick I want to do is if you go here to sketch and then I go to sketch and I choose this face in here, you see that's already the origin. So I'm gonna make a circle that is gonna represent the lead within the pencil. And I'm gonna define this dimension and say, let's make that like 0.1. And I'll go here to features. And actually I'm just gonna extrude downwards by a very very tiny amount why so that way it's enough that it's like noticeable uh, so it's just to imprint the detail in there so now what we can do is i can say right click in that extrude cut and go to here which says cut extrude and i don't know let's make that black right what about the hexagon right click then go to boss extrude and let's make that one uh, yellow. And then we can right click here. And actually, we can go to Boss Extrude. And let's make that aluminum, right? But I want this to be green aluminum. And then the same thing with this. I can right click there. I can go to Boss Extrude. And there should be rubber as one of the materials. I think it's within organic. Uh, maybe it's mis miscellaneous. Oh, it's in separate. 
where, where did you say it was? Oh, the rubber. Thank you. Let's see that one. And let's make it like red like that. You have, you know, like a pretty decent pencil. It's not as detailed as. So let me show you the pencil I did, right? It, which is also nothing, nothing too fancy, but you can. Oh, this is the drawing, actually. Uh, we, we're also going to learn how to do drawings in class, too. Uh, let me open recent. There we go. So the pencil I did is not very different. It just has the cone, which I'm going to teach you soon how to make. And it also has a little bit more details on the on this part. But that, again, that's probably going to appear next week. It's just how to make like certain patterns and revolves and, and everything. But let's go back to our model because I just want to illustrate one last thing before we're done with today that this is not, say, this is a MIT spent, right? So how do we let them know that this is MIT? Let's put, let's engrave the word MIT here, right? We can go here to sketch and I'm going to sketch on this face. Um, yeah, on that one right there. And I can write, for instance, I can click on text and I'm going to choose that line. Let's say this is MIT. This is the MIT. Of course, why not, right? And now I can click in here and center that. And one thing I can use is go here to document font, font. And let's make that a little bit smaller because otherwise it's not going to fit. And then we click here on OK and we go to features and extrude cut. So if we did it correctly, there you go. It engraved it in the surface. So it's not, there's better approaches to do something like this, which I'm going to teach you for potentially when we design the kind of diet code. But I'm not sure when that's going to happen, but there's a way to engrave stuff that is a little bit better. But I think this is a good start. Um, so that being said, and before I answer your question, I'm going to start, uh, stop recording because it's already 4.49 and I want to end it here. Uh, actually, just to, let me just go back to the to the main slides. Uh, so yeah, so the iPhone 6, then the pencil, you can try with the drawing, uh, just remembering the office hours and to give you a preview of what we're going to do tomorrow. Uh, because normally this class would happen on Monday, so it's a little bit too much, but tomorrow we're going to not only review all of the stuff that we did today, but we're going to make, we're going to take a 2D map of a, of a topographical region of the world, anything that you choose. We're going to put that into SOLIDWORKS and create a model like the one on the right, where it's like a little island. Um, and then we're going to choose your favorite logo and make a SOLIDWORKS model out of that. So to give you a preview of how that looked like to me, uh, maybe I can go back here. Let me open up. I'm a, I like Panda Express a lot, right? So I, I cut it like this little. So then you can make like a little keychain like this. So once you mainly take more advanced classes at MIT, you could machine this, you could 3D print this, you could laser cut this, whatever. Uh, but that being said, I'm going to stop uh, sharing my screen for a second. And I'll stop the recording right now. I want to do the iPhone and I think the challenge with the iPhone, or at least I want to show you how I would, given all of what we've learned today, design the iPhone or a, a little bit of it. Um, and I think the challenge is that the only thing I know about it is the dimensions that I'm telling you there. Uh, so I guess we need to remember those. Uh, and I think that's part of like, getting started with this process of just cutting stuff. Uh, without really having not even the physical model, just a picture. So how would I do this? Let's go back to Microsoft here and let's do file, new part. Uh, and I'll do, a, I'll start with a sketch. I'll go here to the sketch and I'll choose say the, the top plane. So now I'll, you see where it says, this is the rectangle mode. So I'll go to the little triangle. I'll click on center rectangle. And I'll use here the origin and I'll make a, and I'll click escape. So now I have a rectangle, which is going to be, I guess, the more or less what the iPhone shape will, will be. And you can feel free to look at this afterwards uh, in the video. Um, and if we go back to the, I guess I can just Google them in here. So the six dimensions. So it's 554 and 264. Okay. 
So I'm gonna go sketch free. So smart dimension two point sixty four. Five point sixty six. I don't have very good memory. And then it said I believe point twenty seven in, in thickness. I'll go here to features. Twenty seven in thickness. So I guess I, I want to start first with a, with a general shape of, of the icon, right? So if we look back to say like like Google Images, right? And you see, uh, let's just put iPhone six. And I think the iPhone six is a little bit difficult to design. We uh, see how I think this one is a nicer one. Like the edges are kind of round when you think about it. So one way I do not know exactly how round the edges will be. But what I can do is I'll go here to like fill it. And I if you click in all of the edges like that. Oh. Something along those lines, and then I click OK. But it's more or less giving me shape. It doesn't need to be, you can always be more precise. This might be like a like a fake version of the iPhone 6, this might be our version. And, here. and then how would I do perhaps the, let's go back to the picture, right? Then you have like the screen. So to do the screen, one idea I have is maybe I can go here to sketch, go up to sketch and click on the face. And then I can go, to like, I can do another center rectangle, choose on this point. It's more or less like that tall. So maybe I'll make that like 2.15. And maybe I'll make that 4.35. And then what I'll do with features is I will extrude cut, but just a very, very tiny amount. That is enough for you to be able to see that there is like a screen on it. So it's like a little trick I like using. Um, and just to give you an idea, right? Because I designed it. Let me just open, let's see if I have it here. This is the iPhone 6 I came up with. This one looks a little bit more like the actual one. Um, and it's, when you look, and again, you guys can download it and see, it has a lot more steps that I put into it and just like details. We're gonna make a simpler version. It's the same, the same idea, right? Like how to do it. So feel free if you want afterwards to just take a look and use it for whatever you want. But let's go back to, back to like this one in here, right? So then it has like the button right there. So another way to do the button is I go here to sketch, sketch, click on the face, right? And then do, I guess, a center line. And why a center line, right? Let me do, let's do a circle, right? Say I want to make the button there. Again, to illustrate the same the same purpose of the center line, if I were to define that circle there and say I want to make it 0.45 or whatnot, it doesn't know where in space it is. So a way to do that is, oh, is it coming? These screens are difficult to work with. Let me just share my screen again for a second. Um, I'm sorry for that. Oh. oh. Oh my goodness. This is difficult. Yeah. And it's uh there we go. So what I can do is I can go back to the origin and say I want to make a center line. Maybe something that goes like that, and then something uh like this. Oh, wow, why is it? I'm sorry for that. Just Zoom is acting strangely. There, there we go. And then I can say, click on this point, hit control, and then click on, it's gonna appear there. So that point in there, which is the middle of that line and say coincident. So now it just moved straight to that position and it means that it's fully constrained. And we do the exact same thing. I go here to features, extrude cut, and just a very tiny amount. So now that marks like the positioning hole uh, in there. What we're gonna learn tomorrow is how to bring pictures into a sketch. 
because for me to do like the upper logo, I, it's not that I know it out of heart uh, how to make the upper logo. I have to like use a picture and use a spline and trace it out. So I'm not going to do it like that right now. But it's some other interesting stuff that we can do. Say, if you go like on the side, right, it has like those buttons in there, right? So let's try to make those buttons. And, and a way I would do it simply is if we go back to like this simple model, like the, I guess the, the how to cut phone, I would go here to sketch, sketch, and I would choose that plane in there. So I'm now gonna work on the side plane. Oh my goodness. Um, let me just come back. There we go. I wanna work on the side plane. All right, so where are we exactly? Uh, um, and you see like the origin is there, that's good. So maybe the first thing I'm gonna do is I'll make a little center line that goes from there to there to the origin. That way I more or less have some points. Then I'll make another center line that goes, you'll see what I'm doing in just a second. And I'm gonna define the dimensions of all of these lines. 1.5, let's make that 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0 0.2. So why did I do all of these lines? Because there's a very cool command that's called slot. So I'm gonna use slot is, I can choose say this point and that point, and I can make a little space like that, right? So that's gonna be the little slot in which our buttons are gonna go. And I'm gonna make the same thing here, right? And then I'm gonna do a smart dimension. And I can say, make that like 0.12. And this one is a little bit smaller, uh, 0.08. So now what I can do is I go here to features, extrude cut, um, this one I want to cut a little bit more. So maybe I'll say 0.1 that I want to cut in. Well, actually, that's a lot. 0 0.05. So now we have like the button space of the of this thing, like on the side panel. So now let's actually make the panel, the buttons themselves. So how would you do the buttons? Well, what I would do, for instance, is now I'm gonna do another sketch. So I click on sketch, sketch, and I choose this plane in here. What I can do is uh, say a line that goes like this, like this, and like actually that might not work. I'm gonna try again. So I'm gonna do the following lines. From here to here. Very nice, okay. You'll see what exactly is going to happen. I'm also, I like these construction lines because they help you mark the space and just slowly visualize what's going on. Um, so if I click on this line, control, click on the other one, the panel appears, I'll make them equal. And then all I need to do is define that one. And I'll say, I want that to be a point 0.1. Okay, so now again, I go to the slot command and I click on this point and on that point, and I want to make it as, let's say, as big as that. So you see now, the, the, this is a great example uh, because the slots are overlapping, so I need to modify. So this is the power of smart dimension in the sense that if I were to make that 0.15 now, it just automatically takes care of that. And the more complicated stuff that we do, you realize why it's important to give everything a dimension. Um, and then what I would do is I would click on, so you see this is undefined, right? Why is that? I can still move it. But if I click on this point, control, click on that point, I can make them coincident. And if I, again, let's make this uh, big like that. If I click on this point, control, uh, click on that point, I oh, know actually that one is not gonna work. I should have chosen this point. Control that point, coincide. There we go. So now everything is dark. 
So then I can go back here to features. Up, I'm gonna extrude upwards, uh, but let's make it 0 0.07 this time. Very nice. So now we have, I guess, the two buttons uh, in there, but these, these are kind of ugly. So what we can do is we can go here to fill it and choose like these two lines in here. And you see, uh, I'm gonna use a symmetric. If you put full preview, right, it's, you see that there's no preview at all because that right radius is very large. But if I were to decrease it like that, you see it shows. So now we are like something decent that is slowly appearing here. And we can do the exact same thing. I can do it like very quickly. Uh, well, I guess I can do like the button in this one. I just wanted to, there's a different approach. So I'm not gonna, I'll save myself time for that one. And then for like the materials, right? I can right click in this and say, I wanna make the full body be out of aluminum. So I'll make it matte aluminum, right? But if you go to the iPhone, right? At least the one that I designed, it was more similar to this one that had like that white, uh, I guess like surface like that. So what I can do is go here back to SolidWorks, uh, to this part and in this face, right click. I can go to the color, go where it says face. And then instead I wanna make a plastic, let's make it high gloss white, right? So this is starting to look a little bit more, uh, like, well, there's a, did it become, I don't even know. Actually, or maybe I can try another one. Um, let me do, if not, uh, solid, maybe that one might work. And then for the face, I can right click in this one, go to where it says cut extrude. And that one, I'll just, again, I'll make it solid. Uh, or maybe, I'll just make it like black. This is just to get like a general pretty model, but it's enough that then you can pretty print it. It might look like a baby like this. And you can make the same thing uh, with the button too. Again, go to the button. Again, and go to where it says uh, cut extrude. And just make it black. Something like that. What are the what are the features that we can add to the iPhone? For instance, I guess the the button in, in the bottom, right? For charging. Let's see, like, You see, like it has, like oh, that would be nice. The six holes that are in there. So let's try to make that pattern. Um, and so one way to do it is we go back here, and now the approach would be here to go to sketch, sketch, and let's select that plane in there. Um, and again, center lines to more or less understand where we are. So I go from the origin of that plane to here. There we go. And now what I can do is go here to center line, choose that point. And all I'm gonna do now is the first hole. So I want the first hole of that series of, five, of six holes to be in this position right there. So I'll make a little circle like that, smart dimension, maybe 0.04 or whatever. I can actually make that a little bit bigger, 0.06, it doesn't matter. And then features extrude, and I extrude like that amount. So now what I can do is you can go to where it says linear pattern up there. So we've done circular pattern already, now let's try linear pattern. So you click here on linear pattern, and then it, for features, I want this hole. And then for direction, I wanna choose this line. Uh, is it choosing? Uh, Actually, what I might need to do is, let's see if it, uh, there we go. So I just, I just need that line in there. I can say reverse the direction in there. Let's say you want a separation point one seems fine. I want a total of six. And there you go. Uh -huh. And again, like this is all recorded. So you can then afterwards go back to it and just revise anything in particular. You want to learn how to do it. And then I guess I'll wrap up now in terms of the iPhone just by doing, say, like the, the slot in there. So how would I do it again? Also, you see that I, this sketch is now showing. It's because I can click on the, I can right click in there where it says the eye. I can hide it again. 
So sometimes it might be useful to show a high speed. Uh, just a, a preview of many things that will happen. Uh, oh, let's wait again to connect um, again. There we go. All right, so let's do the final slot. So let's go back here to sketch. I want to do this surface. And re just remember that this is a flat surface in there. If it was a curved surface, I wouldn't be able to do a sketch. Uh, there's other tricks that we'll learn, but for now it has to be a flat surface. So I'm gonna go here to center line, go here from the origin, choose there like that. That way I can more or less like the my point of interest is that one, but that is literally half of the half of that plane. So then I'm gonna define how big of a slot I want. Just gonna make two lines going in the two directions. I click on one, control, I click on the other one, the panel appears, I'll click on equal. Uh, oh, my goodness. It's very sensitive, the computer today. Uh, and then I go here to smart dimensions. Uh, I'll put, say, 0.15, whatever. That might be a little bit too big, so let's say 0.1. And then what I can do is go back here to the slot command. So I'll click on this point. I'll click on that other point. And do like that. And if I click escape, you see it's still under defined because I need to tell it how wide this might be. So I'll say 0.1. And then features extrude, um, say 0.1. Actually, it should be a little bit more than that. And just to make it nice, what I can do is like a fillet along those lines. And let's make that 0 0.03. That's a little bit too much, so 0.02. And maybe right click in there for cut extrude. Let's make that dark. The same thing with all of those. So I'll let you try how to make this one afterwards in your free time. This is, of course, a very basic model, but I, I think with what we've learned today about the scape, which is a very basic command. You can slowly try to get to something like this. Uh, and if not, shoot me an email and we can continue chatting more about that. But I'm sure that in just maybe by next week, you'll be able to make this one. Uh, it's a very similar process, just using slightly more tricks that we haven't yet learned. Just to illustrate some concepts, but you can see that's exactly how I made the buttons in there. This button in here, this one is like a sliding one. Then here beneath, again, the same. So the tr the difference in this one is that it doesn't have a flat surface. So that's all curved. So when it, everything is all curved, it's a lot more difficult. So we need to create planes, stuff that will happen starting on Friday, I think, or on Monday of next week. And then like this button in here is actually not flat. It's curved. Uh, the same thing with this one in here is very tricky, how you make like the, like the slot from where you take the chip. Uh, another button there. And of course, the Apple logo, the camera, uh, so, so stuff like that. Um, 